Well, this is a Fox film. Fox is owned by Disney, so now I can talk about this for Disney December. And thank God, because I had so many people over and over saying, have you seen Prey yet? Have you seen Prey yet? And sadly, I couldn't get around to it. I was just too busy. But then when I found out I could watch it for work, it finally gave me the opportunity. And before I begin, I should let you know, I have seen Predator in the Alien vs. Predator movies and no other Predator films. I like Predator, but I don't love it like I do, say, the Alien movies. Even the bad Alien movies I want to see. So just bear that in mind, when I talk about this film, I'm not going to be able to compare it too much to all the other sequels. With all that said, yep, everybody's right, this movie's pretty bad This time the Predator is attacking Earth during the 1700s. Instead of the military, it's a Comanche tribe. The story centers around a girl named Naru, a young hunter who's very much encouraged not to be a hunter. This could get very preachy very fast, but the film really balances this out well. You already know what the lesson here is gonna be, and they don't dwell on it. They give you just enough that you see what she's up against and you're rooting for her. They're also really good at not making her annoyingly over her head like, say, Taryn or Kaylee, but they're also good at not making her so perfect she's boring like the remake of Mulan. You see why she wants to be a hunter. She's naturally very good at it and very inventive, but she doesn't know everything. She's just starting to enter this world and anytime she makes a mistake, which there are quite a few, everybody rubs it in. But it's not overkill. That's literally what the predator is for. Every time someone or something in some way seems to tell her she can't do it, it isn't treated like a straw man scenario or a soapbox. It's treated like an obstacle. This is a movie very much about hunting, and there are a lot of obstacles in hunting. At the end of Alien vs. Predator, I found myself having a really good time because it was just a predator, a human, and an alien, and that's all they were doing. There was no talking, they were just hunting each other. And I love that, and I said, I wish I had a movie of just that. And this is kind of the closest we get. I guess you could say the fur traders are kind of the aliens in this. And I won't lie, every time other characters came into this, I thought it was gonna hurt the film because I did want it to just be her and the Predator. But it quickly dawned on me, then you couldn't see the Predator take out his prey in so many various ways. It is still a Predator movie, we want to see him take out people in a cool way, and he definitely does. But what I like is there's the quote-unquote primal way of hunting with the Comanche, the quote-unquote advanced way of hunting with the fur traders, and then the even more advanced way of hunting with the Predator. I love that's three different styles of hunters in this movie, and they all kind of learn from each other or don't learn from each other, and we see the advantages and disadvantages. We see how some evolve, we see how some devolve. I love seeing essentially these three different tribes work off each other. Nauru's struggle is a great one because she's not seen by the Predator as a threat. On the one hand, that kind of saves her life a lot. On the other hand, she's kind of pissed off. Like, that's the whole idea. She wants to be a hunter. She wants to be a threat. But the conclusion she comes to with that and the way she utilizes it as an advantage is so clever. I think taking the step backwards in time really makes sense, and I know prequels are everywhere and a lot of them aren't really that great, but by going back to a time period where the hunter and hunted were constantly in battle, and constantly switched up who was the hunter and the hunted, this was really an inspired choice. The Predator himself also has a really cool design. I like it isn't just the exact same one we've seen in the other movies. It actually does look a little different, but you can still recognize it as a Predator. Any problems I have in this are nitpicks. I'd say the first thing that stood out to me is kind of the more modern speech that everybody has. It isn't too distracting, but every once in a while they'll have a line like, Oh, he led us to dog or I got this. The majority of the dialogue is pretty timeless, so sections like this do really stand out. Even the way they say some of these lines feels a little modern. I don't know, Amber Midthunder, that's the actress that plays Naru. I did buy her performance, but there is something about her look and even her voice that just makes me think of more modern day Hollywood. And the way some of the other hunter boys talk in this, kind of similar. They sound a little bit more like skaters than part of a tribe. I'll also say the CG is a little hit and miss, and there's one mistake that the Predator keeps making that just seems a little out of character for him. It has to do with the little three laser beams on his helmet. When you see the film, you'll know what I'm talking about, but he literally makes the same mistake twice, and it just 
doesn't seem like that matches for a hunter that's this advanced. But again, these are nitpicks. I mean, again, it's a Predator movie. There's supposed to be some kind of corny moments and things that don't always add up. You're mainly just there to see something that's really bad and root for the main character, and that's really what I do here. I was actually enjoying the story of this tribe so much, I kind of forgot for a little bit that it is a Predator movie. And I think a lot of that comes from not trying to hammer in a message, but rather get across a theme or an idea. Her family doesn't want her to hunt because she's really good at medicine, and they don't think she's ready, and they are concerned for her. It all comes from a place of love. So when you do see her stumble, you get where they're coming from too, but when you see her overcome it, you just cheer her on even more. I've seen a lot of movies that goof up this hero's journey where they either make the character too strong or too weak, and this really finds that right balance. It's a great flick. Everybody's right. You should check it out. Honestly, seeing this really does make me want to check out the other Predator sequels I haven't seen yet. Even the bad ones. If you haven't found this wonderful movie on streaming yet, do so. It's definitely worth the hunt.